Welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. This video is part of a series of MuleSoft video tutorials where I'm covering different topics related to MuleSoft. For DataWeave, I have already created many videos and uh, many people in the comment section requested to cover more of uh, the functions and, uh, and capabilities of DataWeave. So I thought of creating some more videos covering different functions uh, which are available out of the box in the DataWeave. So in this video, we are going to see MuleSoft DataWeave Arrays function. And the Arrays uh, function module consists of plenty of functions uh, which are quite uh, quite good. And they are, these helper functions help us a lot when implementing our message flows and processing the data. So we will see a few of those uh, array related uh, helper functions in this video tutorial. And then uh, we will see uh, and try to cover more uh, of those functions in the subsequent videos. Uh, in case if you need any further help on those. So let's see what we are going to cover and which of the functions from the array module that we are going to cover in this tutorial. First of all, we will see that how we can use count by function, uh, which is available in arrays module uh, in the data weave core. And then we will see that how we can uh, can, can uh, play around uh, with, a, some, with a specific example array and count number of elements uh, within that array that fulfill certain condition. Next, we will see that how we can use divide by helper function on a specific array and divide it into subarrays. Then we will see that how we can use drop function to drop some elements uh, out of an array. And then we will see that uh, how we can use split add function, which is another quite uh, useful helper function which splits one array into, uh, into uh, two arrays based on the condition provided uh, as part of a parameter for the split add function. And last but not least, we will see a very uh, commonly used uh, helper function, which is index of. And if you are from, any, from the background of any programming language like Java or any other language, you might be familiar of uh, this function already. And index of uh, provides us the, uh, the index of first occurrence of a specific element in an array. So now, without further ado, let's uh, go to uh, Data Weave Playground and start uh, uh, demonstrating how to use these helper functions from the arrays module. All right, so I'm already on the playground. I have uh, just zoomed the screen so that you can see it better. So if you want to play uh, with the data weave, uh, of course, you can always use any point studio and directly you can uh, play around uh, in your studio project. But uh, another easier and convenient way is to go through, uh, go to the playground that is provided by MuleSoft and the link uh, to this uh, playground I will put in the description as well. And once you go there, then you can simply uh, type uh, your uh, data weave scripts over there. And using data view expression language, you can uh, just uh, perform various uh, available functions that are provided. Like in this case, by default, we have payload and whatever JSON payload I have, I'm just printing that in the output. So you have payload, you have script, and you have output. So three sections are there. And as soon as you make any changes, uh, those changes are automatically reflected into the output. For example, right now, message is subscribe my channel. So if I just like write tutorials media, you can see that now the output message has been changed. So this is not something which is uh, in the scope of this uh, tutorial. Uh, the purpose of this tutorial is to play around with those uh, uh, arrays functions. So that's what we are going to do. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to uh, import our, our function uh, arrays uh, helper uh, module. So if you go here, uh, I have already opened in the documentation. So uh, DW colon colon core colon colon arrays. So this is the module. So you will have to import this uh, in your project. Only then you will be able to work with. So what I will do is that I will write the import and then subsequently we will be using different functions out of this module. So I will write import steric from, and if I just write, sorry. DW colon colon core colon colon arrays. Okay, so 
when you write arrays it automatically adds the entire one so you don't need to write the full one so now it is imports direct from dw core arrays so all of the function which are available as part of arrays module are now available over here so here we are going to create a variable so i will write var data and this is going to be an array so let's create a simple array uh, with some uh, integer elements 1 33 55 99 and then maybe 2 so we have created an array which contains a total of five elements so the first function that we are going to try is the count by function so for that we will uh, we want to count in this array some specific uh, elements which fulfill our condition okay so for that purpose i will write the name of the array data and then i will write count by function and here i will put the condition dollar greater than 33 okay so now if you see uh, with this condition we got the result as 2 why we got the result as 2 because if you see in this array the number of elements which have the value greater than 32 are only two which is this one which value 59 and value 99 if i put greater than or equal to 33 now the count is three so there are total three elements in this array which are fulfilling the condition that we have specified you can have any other type of conditions here it's not necessarily that you just put uh, this type of uh, arithmetic conditions you can have uh, any types of conditions here for your array and even your array needs not to be necessarily with the primitive data types of course you can have uh, an array with the mixed type of data or it can be of uh, maybe some nested uh, json elements or something like that so any type of array that you have uh, you can play around and you can uh, you can this uh, use this function to uh, to get the count of uh, the number of elements which are fulfilling your criteria but for the sake of simplicity, I'm using here an, an array which is just having integer data. So the next function that we are going to try with is uh, divide by. So the divide by function, what happens is that uh, when you have an array and you want to divide it into a number of sub arrays maybe for your own uh, processing requirements or maybe you want to make some other um, business logic on individual uh, sub arrays in that type of scenario you might need to divide your array for maybe performance uh, reasons or for any other reasons so uh, you will use the function divide by and then you will specify that you want to divide by what number of elements at max for each of uh, the subset so if i put two now what will happen is that we have a total of five elements so each of the sub array can contain maximum two elements so it created first array with the two first values one and 33 second sub array with the value of 55 and 99 and we have the third sub array which has only one value which is two because we have a total of five elements in case we had six elements then this should have uh, another element uh, in the third array as well so if I divide it by 3, now you will see that uh, we will have a total of two arrays. The first array contains three elements and the second array contains two elements. So this is a simple helper function for uh, arrays. When you are working with arrays, you can divide your array into sub arrays using this and providing the uh, deviant condition. So the next function that we are going to see is the drop function. So using the drop function, we can drop some specific number of elements from an array. So in this case, uh, if we use the drop function and if we specify the name of the array, which is data, and let's write two. So you can see that the output now contains element number three, four, and five. So two for initial elements, which are one and 33 have been dropped. So if we write, uh, let's suppose uh, one only, so only the first element has been dropped from this array and if you write something which is uh, uh, more than the number of elements in an array then what happens we can see that if you write nine since the total number of elements in this array are only five so in this case you can see that the output is blank so everything has been dropped so if we write something else like minus one and then what we see is that we get entire array so it is uh, less than the total number of elements uh, in the array so in this way 
we can always uh, use this function in case if you need for some specific business case you can drop some elements uh, using this so this is also a pretty simple and uh, maybe useful function depending on your requirements another useful function that we are going to see is uh, split at so previously we we saw that uh, we can use divide by and in that way we get multiple uh, sub arrays uh, out of a single array and that can be any number of uh, sub arrays uh, based on the number of total uh, elements available in the array and the number that we provide for example if we have uh, 15 elements and we provide uh, 5 uh, as the dvn number then it will have three arrays but this function split at does a different thing that what it does is that it splits an array into uh, uh, only uh, two uh, arrays based on the number uh, we provide where we want to split so uh, for example in this case if we want to split at uh, three or four so what will happen is that it will take number one two three four so up till this it will put them into the first array and at this point it will split it and then any elements after this which can be any number of elements will be part of the second array so in this way we have two arrays now and it, the first array contains uh, left and right so l and r are given here so this one contains the first four elements because the split number that's the element the number that we provided the index that we provided is four so in this way the first four are going to be in the first array and subsequent numbers of a number of elements going to be in the second array if we provide one so you will see that now only the first element with the value one is in the first array and all other elements in the second array so this is another useful function which might be uh, uh, helpful for you for some specific requirements where you have to split your array into two okay so then last but not least the uh, the, the the function that we are going to see is a very commonly known function is index of so index of function what it does is that uh, it provides us an option to get the, the the index number of the first occurrence of some specific element so for this this we will use index of and let's suppose that we want to find the index of uh, value 55 so we can see that we got the number as 2 but the interesting thing is that it is at number 3 so the reason is that the index starts at 0 so at 0 at index 0 the value is 1 at 1 it is 33 and at index number 2 the value is 55 so if you write 1 which is at the 0 index you can see that we got the result at 0 so in this way you can use this index of function and you can find the the, the first occurrence of an element so let me show you another thing that that we are searching for the number 1 imagine that we have two elements with the same value then it is available at index 0 and it is available at index 4 as well but we got the answer as 0 because it's not checking all the occurrences as soon as it finds the first occurrence of the element in the array it gives us the result and we get that number as the index of that particular element so we just covered uh, only a handful of functions out of all the available function for this arrays module and these helper functions are quite handy and uh, in case uh, if you want to play around with other functions uh, you can play around it has that MuleSoft has a very good documentation available for each of these functions with the examples and in case uh, if you have any questions or ambiguities of course uh, you can write in the comment section and if you want me to cover any other functions out of this module or from any other modules that i can that will also be covered in the subsequent videos So that's it from this video and uh, I hope that uh, uh, this information which I tried to uh, disseminate in a very simpler way is helpful for you. These are very commonly used and simple functions, uh, no rocket science, but in, in your projects uh, these functions play a very important role and help you to achieve your uh, desired goals quite conveniently. So available helper functions uh, save you from writing complex code yourself instead of reinventing the wheel you can always use these functions directly 
so in case uh, if you want further uh, uh, information you can always go to the official mules of documentation where you will have enough information about these modules as well as other mules of related topics and also you can play uh, go around to my playlist where i have uh, various videos covering different topics related to mulesoft and in case uh, if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel as more is yet to come thank you very much